Hi, everyone. My name is Rajiv Joshi. I'm the principal solution architect at RTI. I've been with RTI for uh, over 20 years and been working in the field of distributed systems. Um, RTI is the largest um, uh, software framework for autonomous uh, systems. Um, and it's used across a number of different industries, uh, including aerospace and defense, automotive, medical, industrial, and energy. Um, I'm also the co-chair of the Connectivity Task Group. Um, and uh, along with me is uh, Krister, uh, who is also um, uh, the co-chair. Krister, would you want to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. OK, so, so my name is, is Christer Holmberg. Uh, I'm working uh, as a senior researcher at uh, Ericsson in, in Finland, uh, where I've been uh, working for 23, 24 years. Um, Ericsson is maybe most known for, for its um, uh, mobile telephony. It's vendor. It's, it's one of the biggest uh, mobile telephone vendors in, in the world with a, with a long history, uh, but also focusing on, on on other things, including IoT, which is basically what, what, what I'm working on, and uh, focusing in that area a lot of um, on on protocols and and uh, interoperability. So so one of the things that um, often come up is really when you when you're building an uh, industrial IoT system, uh, really what's needed. Uh, and, and one of the questions is, is, is the only thing you need to do actually just to, to connect things and, and transfer messages between those? So that's, that's a great, great question. So one of the things that we find um, is that, you know, if you're working in a silo and, and you're building a small system, it's not connected, really it doesn't matter what you're doing. But the moment you start connecting things, and today the world is getting increasingly connected, then you need to start thinking about interoperability and you need to start thinking about you know, how you're going to structure the, the data and what standards are there. And that's what leads us to this notion of what we call syntactic interoperability. So that you, know, you may be using different technologies um, for connectivity. Um, you know, they may have been developed over different time frames. Uh, you may have components or systems that may be developed you know, 20, 30 years ago. You may be developing new stuff. How do you make sure that the data isn't locked in and you can share that data um, so that your system can work as a whole? And that's where the importance of a connectivity framework comes in because that notion of syntactic interoperability allows you to share information without having to worry about what kind of networks you're using, what kind of specific um, sort of technologies you're using, and gives you a path to continue to add more things and also innovate with new to connectivity technologies. Do you want to add anything, Krister? Yeah, I think uh, what you said is very good. And, and, and I think that that's uh, also how we see it. I mean, we, we're going away from, from this uh, silos and, and, and these systems which were kind of designed uh, from, from, from scratch to interop, where we have different systems uh, that that's going to working together based on different technologies and, and you know, old and new and, and, and so on. So, so it, it, it's really, it's going to be a key challenge and an important work really to, to, to get all those uh, connected together. And, and also it's not only, you know, put the cables together, but really to make sure that, that, that they, they understand that uh, when someone sends a message and means something, that the receiver also has the same understanding. So um, I know we talked about syntactic interoperability as, as an important concept. And because you touched upon semantics as well. Um, do you want to uh, share uh, what is syntactic interoperability, maybe with some examples? Yeah, I, I think, and, and, and coming back to what we, what we said, said earlier, I mean, I, I think it's uh, Syntactic interoperability is really to, to understand the meaning of, of, of when you're communicating with systems. So, so I mean, one thing uh, is you, to connect things and, and send the bits from one, one system to another system. Uh, but when you go higher up in the stack and, and you really start uh, to, to uh, interpret the, the messages, that you really understand that uh, what the, the sender has sent and what he means by the message. 
is uh, that you have the same system or you have the same understanding um, because a lot of this is used in, in, in critical systems where, where you don't really have room for errors and, and, and things like that. So, it, so it's really important that, that uh, in all kind of, as in all kind of communication that, 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 that the speaker and the listener really uh, have the same understanding on, on what's said. Yeah, absolutely. And I would even go further, break it down into, you know, this concept of interoperability. Um, you know, we talk about semantics and syntax, right? Uh, so you talked about the semantics, which is which is the meaning. And the syntax, of course, is is making sure that, you know, the structure is unambiguous, right? So that, you know, if I'm sending you a string with two numbers, you interpret whatever you get as a string with two numbers. And then if I mean the string is, you know, uh, you know, the the name of a room, and the and the two numbers are temperature and pressure. That you interpret them the same way. So that's the semantics. So, really, you know, being able to maintain that, even though the you know, the connectivity networks may be different, um, is really fundamental to building interoperable systems. And and as we go into a more connected world, that's that's key. Uh, absolutely, and also when we're using, for example, the temperature ex ex as an example, is that uh, we give a number, but also the, the units and, and and things like that, and and where where does this temperature come from, and and time, and a lot of those things. Okay, so then then I guess uh, we, we we we've been uh, talking a little about the, the, this why. why what's needed in order to 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 have this but but then then uh, maybe a little wider question so then then what, what should i expect from an iot connectivity framework that's a great question so uh, of course you know we we already talked about interoperability syntactical interoperability and semantic interoperability but you know as we feel the layers of the of you know what's in a connectivity framework we would expect that would have some notion of a resource model that allows you to model data resources and you know describe the data types describe uh, for example you know some way of managing the state of that data um, some notion of um, uh, you know quality of service around that data securing the data itself at the data level um, you know being able to interact with the data in a variety of ways that these kinds of systems um, in the industrial IoT space typically uh, do, for example, publish subscribe is a common interaction model, request supply is another common interaction model. Um, and then some notion of exception handling when things don't go uh, the way they should, right? some notion of quality of service. And then, you know, when that is not met, being able to handle that as well. So those are some of the things, you know, you would expect in a connectivity framework, at least, uh, you know, being able to provide those services or capabilities to an application so that the infrastructure um, can do it in a consistent way and in a way that's standardized and, and you can start to focus on really the applications. Okay, so now, now when we heard about all these things, uh, I guess the question which is on everyone's mind is, is where can I learn more about this? Yeah, um, well, we discuss this every week, uh, every other week um, on a regular basis um, at the IIC Connectivity Trust Group. This is uh, one of the working groups that, uh, that's that been um, in place since, I think, the early days of IIC. I think it goes back to um, 2015 or so, um, maybe even earlier. And, you know, we produce uh, the IICF document and we continue to update that and and um, revise that. And if you want to participate more um, and see what what are the latest developments going on, we love to invite you to join the task group. Uh, we meet uh, these days every other week uh, on Thursday mornings, but those times change as more participants. Uh, you know, we want to accommodate the schedules uh, come in. But uh, yeah, we'd love to see you there and and get your participation as well. Yeah, and yeah. Um, the the actually the, the delivery of, of the task group is, is something we call uh, the uh, connectivity uh, framework, uh, which uh, the, the actually the, the first version has already been published, and currently we're working on a new version. 
And basically, what that is a, is, a, is a document where we, first of all, we, we try to, you know, de describe the concepts uh, of this co connectivity. We, we try to split things up in, in different layer and, and, and explain uh, the things we had talked about earlier, where, where you have transport, you have uh, syntax, you have semantics, and, and so on. And, and one of the things we also do in the document is actually we, we have an uh, assessment template. Uh, and we actually use that then to assess um, different uh, technologies and, and frameworks uh, in order for for people who are who are looking into to to, to building a, a system to really based on their requirements and criteria and, and so on and try to help them in order to to find find a solution which 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 is is good uh, for for them. Uh, and and also to to try to highlight the things that that are important to take into consideration when 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 you when you when you're looking for a system. So maybe oh, I should take this into consideration. I didn't think about this and, and so on. And really try to help people. 